Is it bad luck or bad intentions? One thing is for sure, Carl Carlson has faced more tragedies than any man should ever endure. So many that investigators now wonder if these horrible events aren't something else entirely. Carl Carlson might be the most unlucky man in the world. Just home from work. He loses his wife in a horrific house fire. He could save the children and couldn't save her. The flames were too high for him to get to her. His son is crushed under a truck. It didn't appear to be anything but an accident. His prized horses die in a barn blade. Pretty much the barn was engulfed and it didn't take long. Even his car blows up in flames. He bought a brand new car and uh, that burned up in his driveway. Carl Carlson, a guy in need of a break. Seneca Falls, a picturesque town in upstate New York. The kind of place where your luck can turn for the better. At least Carl Carlson hopes so. And he has made a pretty good life for himself here with his second wife, Cindy, and three kids. When I first met him, he seemed like a very doting father. He seemed very engaged in the, his children's lives. The same kids he saved from a raging house fire that tragically took the life of his first wife, Christina, back in Northern California. He had shown me an article in the newspaper out in California they had written in calling him a hero for saving the children. Did you see scars from burns on him? No, I saw no scars. Cindy tells our Andrea Isom he was a man with a haunted, hurting past. I felt sorry for him. Now he's a single dad to three kids trying to raise, raise them on his own. Cindy and Carl marry and have a son together named Alex. The tragic past appears to be behind him. Their days are full of love and laughter and family fun. A heart. Heart. It's a wonderful life, and Carl is a lucky man indeed. But Carl's bad luck will not be denied so easily. And one night, he wakes up Cindy in a frenzied panic. I was starting to drift back off to sleep, and he sat up and looked out the window and told me to call 911 that the barn was on fire. Trapped in the barn, her husband's three prized Belgian horses. And um, they weren't going to get out. Pretty much the barn was engulfed. Tragically, none of them survived the inferno. Was he screaming, yelling, crying? What was his um, reaction? When he was trying to open the doors um, so that he could get to the horses, but it was a metal door, so of course that was very hot. And now, cracks in the once strong family bond begin to show up. Carlson once saved his son Levi from the house fire that killed his mother, but now the relationship between the two has become strained. According to the things that Levi had shared with us, it was bad. His father was always mean to him, and he just wanted to be accepted by his dad. During Levi's teenage years, he rebelled. Um, there was a lot of arguing, fighting all the time. Just, it, it wasn't good. Levi spends a lot less time at home and more time at Cindy Meckley's house with her kids. But she says Levi is a tortured young man. There wasn't a night that he didn't wake up in a cold sweat and crying. Haunted by the death of his mother in that long ago heartbreaking fire. He could hear his mom screaming. And his father got his two sisters out, but didn't get his mother out. And he never could figure that out because he said he could hear her screaming. And that's what he hears at night. But Levi soon ends up a divorced dad with two young daughters of his own to look after. And his stepmom says he also tries to mend fences at home. Levi was always seeking Carl's approval. Seemed like he wanted to turn his life around and start living the right path. Carl starts paying Levi to do odd jobs around the house. One day, he gives him $50 to do some work on his truck. Carl said he was going to go out and tell Levi that we were leaving. No, you know, nothing seemed odd. Carl came and got in the car, and we went. Four hours later, they return home, and Cindy says Carlson heads into the garage to check on Levi. And then he comes running out with horrific news. He was banging on the side of the house, banging on the windows, telling me to call 911. The truck had fallen on Levi. 911, what's the location of your emergency? I think I need an ambulance. Okay, what's going on? The truck fell on my stepson. Are you with your son right now? <laughs> he's not alive. Is, he, is he breathing? 
No. Okay, we're going to start CPR, okay? Yeah, Carl, they want to start CPR. Do you know CPR? Just test this crust. I know this may be hard for you to say, but what did you see? I saw an indentation in his chest where the truck had landed. And I touched his leg to see if there was any warmth, and there wasn't. Tragedy strikes Carl yet again. Levi is dead at the scene. Carl was very distraught, throwing himself up against the barn walls, crying, laying on the ground. Law enforcement was trying to console Carl because he was so distraught. Next, it's a hard luck life in Seneca Falls, and Cindy slowly begins to realize there is something about her husband that seems to invite tragedy with open arms. I set up an emergency meeting with a therapist and she laughed at me. I'm thinking, okay, maybe I am crazy. 